Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to uh, second quarter uh, result analysis meeting for ACBX. This is, in fact, uh, the first reporting as ACBX. So, apart from discussing banking business uh, as usual, as we normally did, uh, we will also highlight some of the key developments of the non bank subsidiaries that we currently have. But before we go on to that, uh, let me introduce the executive executives uh, with us uh, on the panel uh, today. Uh, to my right uh, is uh, Dr. Somprobin, who is our chief economist. On my left uh, is uh, Kun Jirade, our chief uh, credit officer for uh, SAB Bank. And we also have a host of executives um, uh, joining us uh, online, uh, whose names appear on the screen. So uh, later on during the Q&A session, uh, please uh, feel free to address any questions to any of these ex executives uh, on the list. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Somprovin uh, to give us an update on uh, macro uh, latest uh, development uh, for the Thai economy. Please. Yep. Thank you, Good uh, Good afternoon. Uh, actually, things have changed a bit from our uh, last meeting in April, uh, but it was expected. Um, there are two main messages in my talk today. First, when we look outside, economic conditions seem to dim a little bit. And that was the result of supply disruption, inflation, and policy tightening. And second, when we look inside our economy, things seem to be brighter, yet gradually. Uh, tourism and services-related activities will improve uh, informal sector and wage earners. However, level of uh, GDP and our labor market in Thailand still not back there yet at pre-COVID level. And in this uh, inflationary environment, domestic uh, economy will recover very gradually. And coupled with uh, global economy slowdown, uh, recession fear will loom in. And given this, we believe that BOT uh, will not be able to deliver a, a aggressive height. Uh, we see only two rate heights. Uh, by the end of this year. And let me walk you through this. Um, page three. Okay. Uh, there are more evidence uh, that global economy slowing down, as you can see from the middle and right hand side panel, supply and demand. Uh, we, it becomes more uh, yellow and red. And on the left-hand side, actual data actually surprising, keep surprising us on the downside, especially from uh, US and Eurozone. And there are quite clear evidence that we are moving towards a downward, uh, slow down environment going forward. Um, when we look at the US, uh, although the Fed not yet uh, see it as a recession, but uh, we are cautious about this. This is because first, you know, major countries uh, mutually adopt policy tightening aggressively and thus negative feedback loop uh, could kick in and the world economy could slow down faster than expected. Second, once you know expectations uh, of investor and consumer kick in, uh, self-fulfilling effect will lead to a faster downward spiral of the economy. And third, as you know, that there has been consistent and expected shocks happens in the world. Um, so, therefore, when we look at our latest projection, we see uh, cut, we cut export of, of Thailand uh, and then investment as well, private investment. Overall, at this page, you can see that we are looking at around 2.9% GDP growth of this year. This is quite con con conservative comparing to market expectations. And, and when we look in detail, Um, and look at export. Actually, export growth still pours a positive growth, but it's largely driven by price rather than quantity exported. And second, when we look at on the right hand side, uh, when we count uh, products that, uh, that have low uh, production and low capacity, um, we, we can see that in the area of red and yellow, it accounts for 40% of total production. And that's why it may lead to a softer investment demand going forward. And 
when we look at the bright spot, the middle panel here, uh, we have seen a green, more green, greenish uh, coming from tourism industry. Uh, it's growing momentum because it's darker as well. Uh, and it's important because it's labor intensive and it will improve labor market and it will improve domestic consumption. The tourism industry, yes, uh, in details, we believe that tourist arrival uh, will improve significantly in the second quarter. Uh, we're looking at around 7.4 million visitors by year end, mainly coming from ASEAN, European, and also India. And noted that uh, domestic travelers also advanced very well. In fact, we should reach around 195 million trips or 85% of pre-COVID level by year end. And on the right hand side, there, there are evidence that uh, good improvement in North and Northeast area, which could translate to you know, local improvement and local demand. Uh, inflation, and as we all know that it's coming from cost push inflation. And uh, the bad thing is if we continue to climb up uh, in a month or two, we see a peak of Thai inflation in this third quarter uh, at around 7.8 something, and then it drops by the end of third quarter. And overall this year, 5.9% uh, inflation. Um, although we believe that domestic economy will improve gradually, in fact, it's not back there yet, as I mentioned before. And you can see on the left-hand side, unemployment rate, not back down yet. Moreover, in the middle panel average, uh, our work by our workers is still below, far below pre-COVID level. And another chart, that, another statistic that I'm not showing here is that 70% of Thai workers actually will have real income below pre-COVID by year end. And that's why, you know, when, when, when we look at uh, policy direction in Thailand, we don't think that DOT would deliver aggressive rate hike this year, our analysis found that given the current situation, if we have aggressive rate hike, it will lead to more income loss than what people can save from lower inflation. And at current situation, we found that two rate hikes uh, by year end, uh, uh, and also another two hikes by early next year would be enough to curb inflation expectations and prevent a wage price spiral upward. And lastly, uh, for the bar, we see a short-term depreciation to continue. We see in the range of 37 bar, but it should improve uh, towards uh, year-end as well. The improvement coming from current account uh, should turn to positive uh, from tourist receipt. And that's all from EIC. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sombrovin, uh, for very good update on the macro outlook for the Thai economy. So let me now uh, turn to uh, our second uh, quarter results. Generally speaking, uh, I believe uh, second quarter was a solid uh, quarter uh, for us. Um, NII growth was uh, quite strong and driven mainly by uh, NIM expansion. And the NIM expansion that we observed uh, in the second quarter was actually uh, larger than uh, what we have budgeted for. And I can uh, give you some of the reasons uh, why um, this is uh, the case. Um, first, we, we have been tightening up uh, our pricing uh, policy for new loan approvals and new loan uh, offerings. And we started to see some meaningful results uh, in the second quarter. And uh, secondly, uh, the impact from the debt restructuring uh, was actually milder on a year-on-year -year basis and obviously uh, milder on a year-on-year -year basis because last year we didn't really have um, uh, this uh, CDR program. So we did a lot of uh, accrued interest uh, reversal when we enter into a TDR restructuring, a, a normal restructuring um, for our customers. So with lower volume of uh, TDR in the second quarter, um, the overall NIM uh, does uh, improve uh, for the quarter. And additionally, for this uh, quarter in particular, we adopted a yield enhancing strategy for our liquid uh, portfolio. So I think that has uh, helped uh, our uh, name expansion uh, for the second quarter. The weakness in uh, non-NAI uh, revenue uh, was mainly uh, from wealth and investment related uh, businesses. Uh, bank assurance business uh, was still quite uh, resilient. 
and transactional banking uh, fee actually stage a continued uh, recovery into the uh, second quarter. So as a result, the non-NAI uh, decline uh, year on year and Q on Q uh, was uh, rather mild. So second quarter, we had a quarter that NAI growth actually more than offset the weakness uh, in the non-NAI. Cost management uh, is still uh, very key for us. Uh, we want to make sure that um, with uh, potential uh, cost increase in the second half from uh, the restructuring, the new setup of uh, SCBX subsidiaries, we still are aiming for uh, overall CI ratio to be within our targeted range, which is uh, low to mid uh, 40s uh, on a whole year basis. So we uh, managed to uh, keep uh, costs under control uh, so far for the second quarter. Now, moving on to asset quality, um, we started to see some uh, sign of improvement in overall asset quality. In a few moments, I will share with you a, a new uh, exciting chart uh, for us uh, that show uh, the cash collection from our customers was at the highest level since the pandemic. We uh, have been monitoring these uh, data points uh, for some time already, and second quarter showed a very good positive trend. It is still too early to say that this will be a sustainable trend. Uh, you heard from uh, Dr. Sundubin already that the road ahead uh, was to be uh, quite bumpy. So uh, for this quarter, uh, we decided to add another 2.5 billion baht of provision as a precautionary buffer against geopolitical risk and inflation headwinds. And this has nothing to do with our crypto uh, currencies exposure whatsoever. It's purely driven by our assessment uh, for macro uncertainties uh, towards our uh, credit uh, portfolio. It may sound contradictory. On the one hand, we're saying that uh, our credit portfolio started to see some sign of improvement. But on the other hand, we added quite a chunky uh, provision uh, in our balance sheet. We rather add on the side of conservativeness. So um, that's why we uh, made the decision um, to um, top up our provision uh, for the second quarter. So right now, the coverage ratio is now over 150%. Lastly, um, in terms of the um, restructuring of SCBX, uh, we may be facing some delay in certain activities or certain approvals to finalize the relevant business transfer from SCB Bank uh, to SCBX. However, we want to reassure that our commitment uh, to create a long-term value is never changed. In the meantime, we make sure that um, the tech-driven subsidiaries and businesses that we currently have uh, will still be making good progress. So I will spend the next uh, few slides talking about the progress uh, on the tech-driven uh, subsidiaries. First, in terms of the digital um, user base, um, in the second quarter, our total digital user base uh, has grown to 23 um, million uh, users. Uh, on all of the platforms uh, that we have under SCBX Group. Uh, obviously, the main one is still uh, SCB EC app. The number of users on SCB EC app uh, rose to 13.7 uh, million users, and then the rest adding up to 23 million users. This represented a growth of 35% year on year. Digital loans outstanding jumped 69% on a year on year basis to 48 uh, billion baht and the digital revenue on all of the platforms uh, under SCBX Group uh, contributed roughly 4% of our total revenue. So that's a snapshot of the um, digital usage and digital users for the group. Now, uh, let me uh, share with you um, the snapshot of um, the uh, consumer finance and business uh, that we currently have at the moment. And these are the businesses that we earmarked to be transferred to SCBX uh, under the uh, Gen 2 of SCBX uh, group structure. The profile that we're sharing here uh, basically um, reflects um, the business um, as if it will be spin off. But in fact, all of the business right now is still under uh, SCB banks under one umbrella. 
and we expect to complete the uh, business transfer sometimes in the fourth uh, quarter of this year. Once we receive the final approval from the Bank of Thailand to pay the one-off uh, dividend from SCB Bank to SCBX. But nonetheless, we want to share with you um, the snapshot uh, statistics um, to um, let you understand the business momentum uh, that we are doing right now. Uh, Cardex, um, the loan that we earmarked to be transferred to uh, Cardex amounted to around 107 uh, billion baht. But the actual amount would be subject to the actual trans uh, transaction value uh, at the transfer date. Um, there's not much growth, growth uh, for the Cardex uh, business uh, for the first half of this year, uh, which is to be expected, uh, you know, unsecured um, business right now. So, but once we uh, transfer the business to Cardex, uh, we expect uh, efficiency improvement. We expect there's uh, many strategy to improve the business performance of the uh, Cardex business. Now, for the other uh, two fintech subsidiaries, namely SCB Abacus and Monix, and the business at both uh, subsidiaries have been doing uh, quite well. Um, loan growth has improved quite substantially uh, from last year. And very importantly, the number of users have gone up uh, to uh, almost uh, 5 million users on a combined uh, basis for these two subsidiaries. SCB Abacus just uh, recently announced um, a successful uh, Series B fundraising. And this followed a uh, Series A fundraising uh, uh, last year. So altogether, they have raised already about 1.5 billion baht uh, in total fund uh, raised uh, for that business. So essentially, um, we are sitting on a, a nice little gain uh, for our initial investment in uh, SCB uh, Abacus. Uh, that is not shown in uh, the PL yet, simply because we are still doing a full consolidation of uh, SCB Abacus, but the value is obviously there. Monix actually has a larger uh, loan book than SCB Abacus, and the business performance uh, is already turning uh, prof profitable uh, this year. So we expect uh, the, the business prospect to be still quite positive, even with uh, the, in the current uh, business environment. Now, um, the other subsidiaries that we want to highlight is uh, AutoX, the much anticipated uh, AutoX. Uh, AutoX has managed to uh, secure the license uh, already and already open uh, the branch. Uh, right now, uh, as of um, the middle of uh, July, the number of branches uh, that AutoX has opened already uh, amounted to seven, over 700 uh, branches and still uh, growing uh, by the days. And they already have a um, full uh, sales team at the moment uh, to really uh, jumpstart the business in the second half of the year. And they managed to uh, have some uh, early uh, success in booking a uh, new loan uh, so far during just in just a short period of time. So for all these subsidiaries, um, we expect to have uh, the management of these subsidiaries to come out and uh, explain and present the business plan uh, to investment community uh, later. So today, I will not be in a position to uh, tell you uh, the detailed business plan, but let's uh, be reassured that uh, we are doing our best to make sure that these uh, new subsidiaries, new business ventures will um, make good returns uh, uh, for our shareholders uh, in the long run. So this is Gen 2 business. In fact, we, have, we do have a few more smaller uh, businesses that are also um, in the face of uh, preparation and have good uh, progress uh, already. Now, in the next uh, slide, um, this is Gen 3. Uh, Gen 3 uh, business uh, mainly involves uh, investment in uh, technology uh, platform and digital asset in the future. Um, the reason that we want to uh, go into a technology platform uh, simply because we believe that um, consumers' uh, behavior has been changing and we uh, do need um, different uh, avenue or technology platforms to engage uh, digitally with our customers. For digital asset, we still believe that um, it is uh, the long-term structural trend. Um, right now, we have little exposure in the digital asset, um, but so we'll be uh, very careful in terms of deploying our investment in the uh, digital, asset, digital asset space. So first on SCB securities, um, 
the revenue uh, has dropped quite a bit uh, in the first half of the year, um, just simply because of the, of the market. Right now, that business is still a tradi traditional uh, brokerage uh, business. But then the uh, pending uh, MA deal, we just made an announcement uh, to the stock exchange of Thailand that uh, the completion period uh, is now extended. And today, I don't have a new timeline uh, to, to tell you uh, today. For SCB uh, 10X, um, we want to uh, give a little bit more clarity in terms of what we are doing for VC, for our tech VC investment. S SCB 10X is essentially our corporate uh, VC arm. And right now, at the end of the second quarter, our asset under management amounted to 510 million US dollars. And this is based on a fair value basis. And we are sitting on a quite a handsome uh, return uh, still at the moment. Essentially, there are two buckets in this uh, AUM. Uh, the first bucket is um, VC investment, which involves in uh, technology uh, startups. And the second bu bucket is what we call strategic uh, investment. Um, for, for the first bucket um, for VC investment, we mainly invest in um, leading uh, technology startups uh, globally, not just in, in Thailand, but also uh, basically as a global investment. We do have a well-established and prudent investment process. Uh, SB 10 x uh, does have a very pro a highly professional uh, investment team, and the IC committee also consists of um, seasoned and experienced um, members, uh, not just in Thailand, but also international experts, uh, the who is who in the uh, VC investment uh, area and also uh, technology uh, area. Of the 510 million AUM, um, we earmarked uh, around uh, 110 at original cost, at cost for investment in uh, digital asset related uh, startups. For example, uh, blockchain, uh, DeFi um, startups. So um, the exposure that we have at cost will not be more than 100 million US dollars. 110 million US dollars is our internal uh, limit, and we haven't actually deployed. Uh, to the full amount yet, so it will be below 110 million US dollars. The investment that we have um, is for the startups that engage in uh, digital asset uh, ecosystem, but it is not our intention to have a direct investment in or speculation in any uh, crypto uh, currency or any uh, digital asset uh, token. Um, but we do have some exposure just for experimental uh, purposes. Uh, very small, I would say negligible. Uh, it is well below one million uh, US dollars, and this investment is done uh, via SCB securities. So um, this is basically our uh, total exposure. Uh, back to the VC investment, the way we approach our VC investment is we do not want to, uh, uh, in, uh, we do not want any excessive risks in our uh, investment. So um, the stage for our investment is mainly. Uh, series B and Series Cs and above. And right now we are mainly doing uh, follow-on investment um, to minimize uh, the risk. So this is basically uh, the exposure uh, that we have uh, for SB10X. Robinhood has made uh, very good progress, uh, even though uh, lately uh, we actually reduce uh, our promotion uh, expenses and promotion campaign. But the business momentum uh, has, to, has continued to be uh, maintained at a very good uh, pace. Um, GMV uh, was up more than ten, uh, seven times uh, to 5.1 uh, billion baht in the first half of the year. Um, the number of registered users uh, has grown uh, more than two times to 2.1 to 3.1 million uh, users. And we started to uh, have some monetization uh, strategy already. It is still uh, early in the stage. Um, the revenue that we are booked so far is still very small, but we believe that uh, once we reach a certain critical uh, stage, uh, we should be able to uh, monetize our uh, user base. So I think that these are the three key subsidiaries uh, under uh, Gen3 that uh, probably will give you more color um, in terms of what we are doing uh, so far for Gen3 business. Now, um, let's move on to uh, second uh, quarter uh, financial uh, performance. 
uh, as I highlighted, um, NAI was uh, quite strong uh, for us. And I'll go into details. Uh, the reason for uh, NAI uh, improvement on a queue on queue and year on year basis. Um, non NAI was weak, um, still under pressure from the weak uh, capital market uh, sentiment. Um, expenses still uh, well under control. Uh, credit costs, we bumped up the credit costs in the second quarter, um, but I will explain uh, why we believe that on a whole year basis uh, it should still be uh, on a controllable uh, basis. And then our, our uh, capital position uh, is still uh, quite uh, strong. So before we go into each of the detail, let me uh, share with you, I think for these, these uh, two pages are uh, just for your references. Now let me share with you uh, a new slide um, that I mentioned uh, early on. This is the cash, customer cash uh, payment uh, to us. And the way we derive this is basically um, we uh, reconcile uh, the accrual interest and then uh, to come up with the cash payment on, on a uh, whole bank basis. We found that uh, the cash payment level in the second quarter was the highest uh, since the pandemic, since the beginning of the pandemic. And not only in terms of absolute terms, but in terms of uh, percentage. So the line chart here is the cash payment uh, divided by interest income. So the concept here is maybe uh, similar to a book uh, to bill uh, ratio in a manufacturing uh, industry. So the higher uh, the ratio, meaning that um, the, the better the cash uh, conversion for uh, the business. Um, before uh, COVID, um, the ratio was uh, around 100%. After COVID, uh, the ratio dropped to a um, uh, very low level in, in the first year of the COVID, but then gradually improved uh, last year. But then uh, lately, it has improved uh, quite a fair bit uh, to the highest level uh, uh, since the COVID. So I think uh, this is a good sign um, that we are observing at the, mom at the moment. But as I pointed out uh, early on, um, we still want to keep monitoring uh, the trend uh, for this uh, data point. Uh, to make sure that we have a sustainable recovery. But nonetheless, uh, the road ahead is still quite bumpy. Um, so, um, but at least for now, um, the, the trend that we're observing up until this end of the second quarter was quite positive. So that um, brings us to uh, the next slide in terms of uh, NIM and yield. Uh, our NIM uh, improved. Uh, 13 basis point on a Q1Q basis, and our yield on loan improve uh, 15 uh, basis point on a Q1Q basis. Um, the main reasons for NIM and yield improvement is um, basically uh, milder restructuring impacts than originally expected, and effective uh, liquidity uh, management. And also, of course, uh, when we tighten up uh, our pricing and uh, risk return consideration, um, we manage to uh, add on to our yield and NIM improvement. And this yield and NIM improvement uh, has been observed across uh, the segment, uh, retail, uh, SME, and also uh, uh, across the uh, corporate segment. Um, some some uh, key observation um, to note is that for SME segment, uh, the improvement was also because of the reduction in the soft loan uh, program. Um, the number of soft loan uh, the load, soft load outstanding at the end of the second quarter uh, came down to the lowest level uh, since the pandemic. And it's a big decline uh, from the first quarter of this year. So that's also helped uh, the NIM momentum for uh, SME. But generally speaking, uh, for SME segment, um, we adopt a, a sniper a strategy rather than machine gun. So basically, um, we have a very uh, detailed granular uh, risk rating. So we focus on the customers who have uh, good behavior and in the good uh, risk rating uh, for us. And mainly we want to do business with uh, our existing customers. Um, so I think uh, with very focused uh, strategy, I think we managed to also to uh, keep uh, positive momentum so far in the second quarter. Um, for corporate segment, uh, the name improvement, uh, the yield improvement uh, was also mainly driven by the fact that we tighten up um, the uh, risks and return uh, criteria. And also because of the lower uh, restructure, uh, vo restructuring uh, volume in the second quarter, that has seen a positive impact in the corporate uh, uh, loan yield. Uh, retail segment also seen 
um, positive momentum across uh, the segment, in particular the uns unsecured uh, business. So I think uh, this is uh, all quite positive momentum uh, so far in the second quarter. For credit card business, uh, one point to note is that we also observed a, a positive momentum in revolving mix. Um, it may be because of the um, state of the business, uh, state of the uh, economy that we are in right now. Um, that, why we, that is why we uh, observe an uptick in the uh, revolving uh, proportion. But nonetheless, that has uh, contributed to a positive um, yield for us. Loan growth uh, on a uh, whole year basis, uh, up uh, total loan growth up uh, 3% uh, year on year and up 1% on a Q on Q basis. Um, basically, uh, we have been adopting a loan optimization uh, program uh, for our loan book. Um, essentially, we want to target um, the right segment of our uh, customers and making sure that um, we have the, the right uh, risk and uh, return uh, profile for our loan book. So over the long run, if you are doing this uh, properly, um, credit costs uh, should come down in, in, the, long, in, the, long, in the long term. Um, corporate segments, um, loan growth um, on a year-on-year -year basis are 4%, and we do see some positive momentum uh, going to the second half of the year. And basically, I believe that um, this, this, this is still the segment that uh, give us uh, the, the appropriate uh, risk and return consideration. Uh, in particular, we want to focus on larger uh, corporates within the corporate uh, segment. Uh, retail segments um, see, have seen uh, rather resilient uh, loan growth. Um, you know, mortgage uh, loan has been quite resilient, uh, up 3% uh, year on year. The only weakness that we are observing right now is, on, is in the auto uh, segment. Uh, basically, for the auto segment, um, the market has been uh, quite weak, and we have been quite cautious in terms of the um, performance of this uh, loan portfolio. And part of the uh, loan optimization strategy is to improve the overall uh, product mix in terms of the risk return, overall risk return consideration. Um, so that's why we, and this is by design, uh, we um, keep uh, the auto uh, loan portfolio um, at a very small uh, growth. In fact, it is a drop uh, on, a, on a year on year and queue on queue basis. And the other consideration uh, for us is uh, to take into account the uh, prospect for rate increase. Uh, so we want to reduce um, where possible uh, the fixed rate uh, loan uh, portfolio uh, for, for us to increase the rate height sensitivity uh, going forward. NPL has shown uh, some positive uh, development and that is probably also in line with the cash uh, collection profile that we observed in the second quarter of the year. Uh, new NPL formation uh, dropped slightly, slightly uh, on a queue on queue basis. In the second quarter, the new NPL formation uh, amounted to 11.1 billion baht, um, down 1 billion baht from the first uh, quarter. And I believe um, the fact that we have done a lot of um, blue scheme restructuring also helped to prevent uh, new NPL formation uh, coming into uh, the second quarter. It is still a high number, but uh, on a Q1Q basis, it has shown uh, some improvement. We are not in a rush uh, to sell NPLs. Um, we believe that um, we, we look at uh, the market right now. There are many uh, new AMCs uh, being uh, set up and we believe that um, we will um, be able to uh, manage our NPL in a very effective uh, way. Um, so to the question whether or not we should set up uh, AMC uh, joint venture, uh, we are open for consideration, we are open for discussion, but I think the message is that we are not in a rush, and we do have a very high holding power, and the fact is that uh, we are doing a lot of um, blue scheme restructuring, so the uh, profile on the new NPL formation has been uh, so far uh, under control. So um, stage three uh, in general dropped from uh, 106 uh, billion baht in the first quarter of this year to 103 billion baht. So it's a drop, uh, it's a net decline of 3 billion baht um, because of the um, new NPL coming down. And also we have effective uh, NPL 
uh, management. And also, I want to also emphasize that uh, of the 103 billion baht in payout book, uh, 40% uh, is on the uh, qualitative assessment uh, basis. And the majority of this uh, qualitative NPL are actually still uh, performing well. So there is a prospect um, for qualitative NPL right back uh, in the second quarter or going forward. So uh, that's why we believe that um, our NPL uh, is uh, well under control. CDR uh, blue scheme uh, customers uh, rose only slightly in the second quarter from 249 billion baht to 263 billion baht. The main increase was coming from retail and secured uh, segment, predominantly uh, mortgage, a little bit in the uh, auto uh, sector. Um, we still uh, maintain overall target uh, for this year at uh, 350 billion baht. So um, according to the schedule of, of our um, the restructuring agreement, a discussion or negotiation with our customers, there will be some uh, new blue scheme customers coming into the program in the second half of the, of the year. Um, the 350 billion baht um, uh, is still the target, um, but if that's a risk, it should be to the downside. I, I think that um, right now, based on the um, cash flow uh, profile that we're seeing, um, we shouldn't exceed uh, 350 billion baht. So 350 billion baht uh, for the whole year should be the uh, cap. In terms of NPL formation uh, on a segment by segment basis, uh, generally speaking, um, they are all quite positive, except for maybe uh, auto uh, segment. As I mentioned, um, we see a certain risk in this uh, segment. So um, the increase in new NPL formation uh, was basically a reflection of the fact that um, we do not uh, provide further assistance for the high risk uh, segments. Um, so that's why the new NPL formation uh, for auto segment uh, was uh, continued to go up in the second quarter. And we also did uh, quite a fair bit of proactive uh, repossession uh, of, uh, of customers. Um, but I think basically just to make sure that uh, the outlook in the long term, in the long term trend uh, will be uh, kept under control. Provision for the second quarter was 10.3 uh, billion baht. So um, the addition was 2.5 billion baht. In the first quarter, uh, we did include um, the add-on provision uh, of about 1 billion baht. So altogether, in the first half of the year, the precautionary uh, buffer that we put in amounted to 3.5 billion baht. And this 3.5 billion baht um, basically um, was a preemptive measure against the inflation headwinds and geopolitical risk. And Dr. Samburvin already mentioned uh, these potential risks uh, that we uh, can expect. Um, right now, we don't see that uh, in our portfolio yet. But uh, again, as I pointed out early on, if we are to uh, make any error, we want to err on the side of the conservativeness. Going forward, um, if there's no major change in the macro uh, outlook uh, than what we are having at the moment. Uh, our credit cost level should come back, come down to a more normalized uh, level. So as I will mention uh, later on, the credit cost uh, guidance has been uh, lifted from less than 140 basis point to allow to around less than 145 basis point. So uh, one should expect uh, credit costs in the third and fourth quarter to be um, coming down to a more normalized level. So our coverage ratio um, right now is 153%, uh, and this is the highest level that we saw since uh, 2009. We haven't seen this level in, in, a, in a long time. Run NAI dropped 3% uh, Q1Q and on a year on year basis. And within this, um, the non recurring non NAI uh, dropped uh, also 3% uh, year on year and quite uh, flat 
uh, on a queue on queue basis. The 2.3 billion baht uh, that we saw uh, in the second quarter for non recurring non in I uh, still consists of quite a fair bit of return uh, income from SCB 10X. So SCB 10X still contributed positive uh, return to our non recurring non NAI, even though the amount was less than or was lower than in the previous uh, quarter. And we uh, also did have uh, some gains from opportunity, opportunistic deals from corporate segments um, that, that is coming in um, in the non-recurring uh, segment that allow us to book uh, some sizable fee in the second quarter of the year. So that's why uh, on an overall basis, the non-recurring non and i uh, turned out to be uh, flat, which is quite positive uh, for us uh, on a Q&Q &Q basis. Now, moving on to the recurring uh, non in AI, what we want to highlight is um, the bank assurance business still exhibited a uh, resilient uh, characteristics, up 1% Q&Q and down only mildly 5% uh, a year-on-year basis. Uh, we have introduced um, new products in partnership with FWD um, to make sure that um, the, the new products or the product mix offerings uh, is corresponding with um, the market uh, demand. And our sales team has improved uh, efficiencies uh, quite substantially. Um, SCB Protect uh, started to see some positive momentum, uh, even though it is still a very small uh, contribution. Um, but together with the better product mix, uh, sales team efficiency improvement, and some pickup in SAB Protect, uh, all of these factors contributed to a solid performance for, of our uh, bank assurance uh, business. Going forward, um, we are really broadening the scope of the partnership uh, with FWD, not just uh, with the bank, but also with uh, key subsidiaries under SABX. For example, uh, just now I uh, mentioned uh, about AutoX, uh, half of the uh, sales uh, person, sales force at AutoX uh, already are uh, insurance are licensed. So insurance sales are licensed. So I think this is also another um, key positive development that we should expect some positive contribution uh, in the medium term from the new businesses that we are setting up under SCBX. Both management um, had a big drop, both Q and Q and year on year, and this is to be expected under the current uh, capital market sentiment. Uh, we have tried to adjust the product mix. In fact, um, in the second quarter, we launched a new product, which is a principle protected, but allow our uh, customers and investors to uh, participate in the upside when our uh, rate uh, increase in the second half. It has uh, well been well received um, by our customer base. So we actually see some uh, positive trend uh, towards the end of the second quarter. Uh, but nonetheless, on a uh, full quarter basis, it was still a, a big drop uh, Q on Q and year on year. We also have been trying to uh, do more of the wealth management uh, through digital channels. In fact, digital channels um, has helped cushion the drop in the overall uh, wealth management products. On the positive note for non-NAI, transactional banking fees has gone up, uh, continue to move up in the second quarter, uh, following an improvement in the first quarter that we witnessed uh, already, up 19% year on year and 9% year on year. And this is quite a positive number. And these are basically um, many transactional fees, including trade, and FX flows uh, from our customers. So uh, an improvement in export uh, would help uh, the trans transactional banking uh, fee uh, here as well. And we certainly expect uh, continue or at least um, um, stabilization of the transactional uh, banking. Cost to income ratio in the second quarter uh, stood at 41%. So it is an improvement from the first quarter, a drop of one percentage point. Um, basically, we, we have been trying to um, make sure that our costs remain competitive and efficient, in particular uh, for the BAU uh, operational uh, transactional 
uh, banking on the trans transactional uh, banking uh, business. Um, this is to uh, make room for any potential additional cost that may be incurred in the second half of the year as a result of SCBX uh, restructuring or new businesses, a new business set up uh, at SCBX. Um, on a full year basis, we believe um, our CA ratio will be uh, within our expected uh, range. Um, it may go up a little bit to uh, mid 40s. Uh, it is still within our expected, uh, expected uh, target. Um, the one-off expense that we may be incurred uh, this year as a, as a result of SCBX uh, development uh, is around 2 to 3 billion baht. And this would be spread across first half and second half, obviously more in the second half, but some already in, has been incurred in the first half. This one-off cost um, is mainly, for example, advisory uh, cost, uh, company set up, um, some certain uh, system set up um, cost. So I think our estimate is uh, for this year is about two to three uh, billion baht. So two to three billion baht, I think that's around maybe um, two, percent, two percentage point of CI ratio. But generally speaking so far in the second quarter, uh, we have seen uh, cost uh, improvement uh, from across uh, different uh, sub-segments. Liquidity is not, is not an issue for us. Um, our LCR liquidity ratio uh, remained uh, very uh, abundant. And what we did uh, so far this year in the second quarter is we uh, deployed certain excess liquidity um, into the uh, risk-free investment, uh, investment grade uh, bond market um, to have some uh, NIM uh, uplift. And we will do this uh, gradually and cautiously uh, under the rate hike uh, scenario, scenario in order to make sure that we will have an optimum uh, return um, for the overall portfolio and also to make sure that we will capture the upside uh, when rate hikes in the future. Capital uh, remains very strong, 18.7 uh, uh, car ratio, 17.6% uh, CE tier 1. Um, with the um, dividend uh, payment um, from ACB Bank to ACBX, uh, 61 billion baht, it wouldn't impact the overall capital position at ACBX. But for ACB Bank, um, the car, car ratio may drop to around 16% plus and minus, which is still quite healthy, safe and sound, uh, and make, making sure that the bank will be able to operate on a sustainable basis. Now, coming to an end of my presentation, which is um, financial targets, um, we have two positive changes and two uh, negative uh, changes. The positive change is on NIM. We are revising up our NIM uh, targets to 3.1 to 3.2 percent. And this is in response to the strong performance in the first half and also prospect for uh, rate hikes uh, in the second half uh, of the year. Another positive change is uh, NPL. We, we lower uh, NPL expectation to no more, not less than 3.6%. But then the negative change is with the non-NI growth target. We are now dropping the growth target to low teens uh, decline. And we, we're trying to make sure that um, we are conservative uh, in this estimate. And the other uh, negative change is the credit cost. Um, we are upping our credit cost to uh, below 145 uh, basis point. One additional comment would be on the loan growth. We are keeping the loan growth target at 3 to 5% uh, for the whole year, even though in the first half, we only achieved the low end of the range. But we believe with uh, a pickup in domestic activities in the second half, uh, we should be able to bring our overall loan growth uh, to reach the high end of the targeted range. So certainly we are working towards um, 4 to 5 percent. So that concludes my uh, formal presentation and let's go into uh, Q&A session.